We are live. Okay. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Tat Chat episode 84. Can you believe it? Um, the title of the chat, Tat Chat today is End of Boot Sales, Cashless Future, and the Importance of Adaptability and More, as you can see. And joining me as ever is Nick. Hello. How are you, how are you doing, mate? I'm doing still juggling, good. Windows, <laughs> still juggling windows. We'd expect nothing less. Apologies for being, I think we were about a minute late, perhaps, but I think that's pretty good going. Um, it's not you know, cons considering what we're normally like on, 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 on this channel anyway, um, I think we're you're, you're a busy people. That's all I can say. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> that is a good way of spinning it. Yeah, super busy. Um, we've already got 50 people watching, so um, welcome. I mean, there's quite a few familiar faces tactical buy it was the first person in followed by bomb crack picker um callum tucker as well has joined us as has southwest sellers lucy t george ross maria clark diesel engine freak will you take less neil patterson falling on a bruise well there's so many people chelsea stacy langley tactical buy it uh, Peaks Retro Collectibles, lots of people saying hello. Um, Neil says, I'm probably eating chicken with coffee. I've had a coffee, but I've not had any chicken today. Um, so uh, it's it's um, it's it's all happening. So welcome, everybody. I've actually just got water with me. So Cool. <laughs> Lovely to see so many people in the chat straight away. Definitely, definitely. I'm keeping my eye out on, on a purchase as well at the same time so i'm going to be quickly keeping an eye out on that but you know what do you we'll mean you get it on ebay yeah i've got to buy something um it's actually looking to you pick not set up. it up as a snipe or you're going to man nah, I'm, just, I'm just going to manually do it Ooh, I, exciting you know yeah, to... yeah i mean it's, it's not to resell it's actually to use so um oh, okay it's okay. actually looking to get like a pc for ourselves so um you know to, to because beck's really tired of listing on them on the chromebook um not not like you know particularly um easy to run with but um yeah. so i've got to keep an eye on that um that switch in between us can you let us know in the chat it doesn't seem to be moving on my is it not i'm sure let's know in the chat if it's actually yeah. switching when we talk because it seems to be doing weird things at my end yeah no it is now say oh. something yeah. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're working. We're working. It's working. Okay, cool, cool. There we go. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, um, there's a question I can quickly answer while I see sure. uh, CYBK or SIBK, as other people say. Um, what was the sniping service I use? Uh, it, I use Bidnip. Uh, B I D N I P. Um, works for me. Is that a paid for um, sniping service, or are, the, are, they, are they all pretty? And then you do buy them. But you only ever pay if you win the item. I think a lot of them have started to um, uh, started to, to to do that now, actually, because I think I mean I've used um, Goofbid in the past, and and that started to to charge as well. So um, you know, yeah. it's, it's an interesting one. Um, before we get going today, I think on the um, actual topics, I think it um, it would be cool to say um, it, to tell you guys about something really exciting that. I mean, a lot of you will probably already know, but um, it's about our new group based on the chat chat. Um, Nick, do you want to give it a bit of an intro for us? Yeah, sure. Well, we mentioned it on Sunday, and I think you yeah. did as well on your impromptu stream. We Just keep mentioning I've always, it. <laughs> I've, I've always resisted having a Facebook group um, because it's a lot. You know, it's a bit of a time drain. But we so enjoy the side chats of our of our live hangouts. There's so many people in there, so many regular faces. We kind of decided we'd create a place where we can go and carry on that that banter that chat and we set up a facebook group uh but so there's zaheer and beck and myself and andrea will be running it um i don't know if you've put a link below on this one to it i have yep i have yep so, yeah go across there and we'll we'll get you in there and join in the chat and it's blown my mind because we mentioned it sunday and it's yep. now at 400 and something 
Yeah, over 400 members already, which is fantastic. So it's just like like you said, Nick, it's a great place for for the buzz of the of the chat to, to carry on because we have noticed the chat does take on a life of its own and um, yeah, a lot of positive comments in the chat about it already, actually. Uh, Falling on a Bruce says, loving the Facebook group as well. Um, so yeah, brilliant to, to see that the people that yeah. are in it. CP Cross says, love Falling on a Bruce is Andrea and she shared her menagerie of animals the other night i don't know if you've caught up with that to here but it's just epic the <laughs> amount of animals she has um but yeah it's really cool because also we we find it hard to keep up with the chat quite often it goes off on tangents and we can't answer questions and we can't get around to things so if you do have questions that, that we don't get to in the live feeds it's a good place to go and, and either we'll answer it or you know anyone else who's on there can answer it for you so that's good. We've we've won the auction. I'm happy. <laughs> Super. Oh, you've won. So, okay. Yeah, it was, it's not. It, like I said, it's not for reselling. It's to use. Well, it is for. It's to help um, do some more work. And, and plus, we kind of need a second PC because when you've got teenagers in the house that like playing The Sims, um, and there's only one PC in the house, it can become fraught, shall we say, when when you have a work play balance. Um, <laughs> Ryan, doing yourself lifestyle says, tell us the specs here. Okay, it, put it this way. I only paid 160 quid for it, so don't expect magic. It is old school, but I've had this before, and it's really good. It's got a, um, oh God, it's an Intel i7-930 chip, which is quite old school, um, but really good. I think, I can't remember, what, what were the 1366 pro, um, socket, um, and it's got a GTX 680 graphics card, and it comes in a really cool um, Razer case, which on its own is about 90 quid new. Um, the graphics card's probably worth about 60. So the case and the graphics card are, are pretty good. But yes, an i7-930, and um, it'll do. Um, oh, it'll you do. could be speaking Swahili for all I understand <laughs> of any of that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, yeah, it was it, it was a great it's a great example of of how not to list something in a way. It was just the title was just gaming PC, um, that was it. Um, so, um, at, bargain, though, was it? Uh... I think so. I mean, for 160 pounds, you know, considering it's a complete PC, so the power supply that you know, I, I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, I could actually, I could probably resell the parts for more than what I bought it for, but it is going to be used um, for. Um, it is going to be used for work, so it's pretty good. It's got triple channel memory, um, and it's going to be perfect for listing and, and a few games. Yeah, definitely. Uh, doing it yourself, lifestyle says he's proud. Thank you, Ryan. I appreciate <laughs> it. Um, yeah, I'm happy as well. I'm multitasked there. Um, so, um, okay. So we, we, we yeah. going back to you had a topic or a couple of topics. Um, yeah, these were actually brought up in in the chat chat group that we set up. Um, and I thought the, the first one that I thought would be a good to touch on uh, was, let me just see who shared it, actually. Kathy uh, Shewell Cooper shared a leaflet that she was actually given at a car boot sale. Uh, and it said quite dramatically, I've just got the Facebook group up. Let me just read it. Yeah. Uh, it said the end of cash will mean the end of boot sales. Banks and government want to finish with cash in a few years time. And it goes on about you know we should try and use cash wherever we can because if we lost lost cash the boot sale you know trading market whatever will will just disappear uh and it was quite a good discussion on that thread what were your initial yeah. thoughts on that so here i i've got to agree uh, it would be futile to think that it won't happen it it will happen um it, it's just part of progress just like people at the moment are, are very much fighting um things like um you know um autopilot cars i think there was something in the news recently about autopilot planes being tested and at first there's going to be resistance to it um it's just an advancement in technology when you think about it coins and money you know there's better ways of dealing with currency um and obviously it, it doesn't need to to be in the form of coins um especially it's just not convenient is it um however I think that there's it, there's no danger of it happening soon, but I don't think as resellers you should be worried because resellers should be amongst the most adaptable people. 
Um, and I, I feel that it's it's something that shouldn't affect you too much. Um, and yeah, it's it it definitely does fuel the the black economy, as people have said in the chat as well. I mean, what, what do you reckon? Yeah, I I think change is inevitable. Uh, and when you when you think about the discussion on the page, says actually that you know there's already PayPal apps you can have on your phone. You can ping money to people, and I think that will get more and more efficient. But as for replacing cash with electronic, somebody also said, oh, let me see if I can find it. Somebody said uh, they mentioned checks, which the banks were trying to phase out going back like 10 years ago. They started to say we're going to phase out checks and they're still in operation today in 2017. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's taken that long to try and phase out what is a pretty archaic way of transferring money. And they're still widely in use. So. If they're going to try and phase out cash, I think we're talking decades away. Definitely, but it's gonna they're gonna go that way, but certainly not in the near future because they've already they've just redesigned the notes, they've just redesigned the pound coins, they're investing billions in changing all of that over. So they're hardly thinking let's knock it on the head in the next four or five years, are they? I mean, in a, in, I suppose in a bit of a morbid way, they're going to have to wait for a generation to pretty much die out before it can happen. I mean, we're talking, we're talking like these these changes happen not over one lifetime, but maybe over a couple of lifetimes because you're going to have to wait for a generation of people that are comfortable with it. Um, so you're going to have you know a new generation. Of, of people growing up i mean even my kids are used to coins obviously because they've grown up with them but maybe you know their grandchildren may be growing up in a society where it's going to be so less frequent i mean for example you know when you're when you're down south when you're traveling most people have already gotten used to not needing money to travel everyone has an oyster card you can't get around london without an oyster card and if you use uh, transport regularly unless you want to be fleeced financially you want to have an oyster card because the, the bus fares are like three pounds or something if you have to pay for a single if you want to pay cash whereas you know that will get you a fair bit away um if your money's on an oyster card so it will happen you only have to look at the speed of change with technology to think that this is coming you know yeah. the, the fact that we all wander around with, with a highly powerful pc in our pockets now yeah i mean and, and it has the ability to to you know do facetime and it has the ability to to move money already yeah. And the fact that 95% of people have a smartphone or something ridiculous now. Yeah, I think, I think it's coming. But actually getting rid of hard cash is a long, long way off. Um, I was just reading in the chat. It was uh, Richard who mentioned on, on the page that, um, in his opinion, it's a long way off. Because, as he says, it was 10 years ago or more when there was talk of phasing out checks, which hasn't yeah. happened. So, yeah, that yeah. was his point. And, and even if you extrapolate this to say like a doomsday scenario, um, such as that 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 leaflet's trying to create that oh, if you go cashless, then but you know it's going to be the end of boot fares because people aren't going to be able to um, you know aren't going to be able to 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 go to boot fares and not going to trade the the older generation will stop coming or whatever. But if you think about it now, even um, if you've got the skill of adapting. A lot of people have already, you know, found many ways of reselling without even needing to set foot in a boot cell. Um, th there's lots of ways of getting inventory, such as Facebook Marketplace or Spock or Gumtree, where people already do business mostly via PayPal. Um, and and even at boot cells, the, there are savvy enough sellers out there that will take PayPal, um, you know, if if you need to. Um, so. It, it's not the end of of the line, you know. By any means, it's just a, a change. Um, it may mean that in the future, boot sales will completely cease to exist um, as we know them. But I doubt it. I think all that will happen is you'll still see boot sales, and money will just be transferred digitally, which, in a way, can only be a good thing because it means everything that's spent will be tracked, and so uh, you know you won't you know you it will your spending will be kind of um traceable um and i don't think that's going to change people who just want to do clear outs either because the tax laws of the country do cover people having clear outs that that's not taxable income if you're if you're a family that's just going out to clear out your your um your your um garage once a year or whatever the hmrc aren't going to come after you however if they noticed that you're clearing out your um garage your cupboards week after week after week and just claiming that it's 
you know, your own stuff, then you may have a few questions to answer. Yeah. But even then, you could probably cover yourself if you can prove that these were your own purchases and you, you've bought them retail and you've got receipts or whatever. Yeah, people are echoing that sort of sentiment, actually. Um, Cedar stuff says car boots have one foot in the grey economy. No danger of cash free anytime soon. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's lots of comment, actually. Yeah, we'll, we'll go into <laughs> yeah, the chat a bit. Bit, Bitcoins. I've, I've never got involved with Bitcoins. I, I, I can't oh, see that taking yeah. over the world. Yeah, it's, yeah I mean, that, that's really... Um, techno currencies are, it's so different they shouldn't completely remove cash but i really wish they would get rid of anything below 10p when was the last time anyone bought something for 5p i was looking at a 5p <laughs> coin earlier and and it just 5p has become such a insignificant amount and those little coins it's like they just seem pointless i mean pennies for example <laughs> you can't use them in the parking. <laughs> yeah. yeah you can't even use them in parking meters you can't use them in um you know to pay for anything really yeah i mean i suppose unless unless there are any sweet shops out there which somehow still trade in that but and know, uh, C cp crafts and more says can see it happening by the time i'm retired i think we all need to be a bit okay with the apps etc yeah i think we need to keep an eye on it but yeah in our in our i don't think in our lifetime until we retire we're going to have to worry about cash vanishing i don't think it's that imminent I don't know. It could. No, no, you know no, what? It no, could no, be. No, I don't know. It that's could 20 be. Twenty odd years. It could. Be. I mean, you've got to think. Just like they're investing like billions on new coins, etc. They're investing just as much on on other architecture in terms of getting internet everywhere. And and and, and um, you know, I think overall it may well suit them to to do it. But we, you know, we'll see. One, I mean, I was going to say one man riot yeah. said what will happen is that one, two, five, ten, and twenty p's and 50p will be phased out and swapped with a card that will give you the spare change on. So you don't have to carry loose change. Um, will you take less has a good comment, says I am cashless, the wife keeps it all. <laughs> so that's, <laughs> yeah. that's, a, that's a form of cashless, if I suppose. With us, if, if we go out somewhere, Andrew just says, oh, can I have some money? Can I have some money? <laughs> Same with I Rebecca. Like she spends yeah. it. Yeah, same with Rebecca. She's just like I keep all the cash, but she's you know just yeah I need it. There's that that, and I'm just dispensing it as as necessary. Um, quite a few people in the chat. We've got 130 people watching, which is fantastic. Thank you everybody uh, for joining us. Um, everyone's getting stuck into the topic, which is nice to see as well. Um, Peter Ray says Oyster cards are a must in London. Yep, I mean, that's the thing. Eventually, when they want to force something like this on you, um, governments always make it a financial incentive to, to, to take on the change because naturally people don't like change. Um, I mean, whether you talk about a cashless society or whether you talk about any other change in your life, most people are almost uh, resistant to it at first, whether it's good for them or not. I mean that's that's pretty standard, isn't it? Yeah, change is change is awkward. I mean, I, I'm still looking at changing up how I do all my postage, and yeah. and I, I still haven't done it because my system is I, I can do it in my sleep, my Royal mm -hmm. Mail Online system. Sure, but loads of my stuff is going tracked, and I'm getting fleeced by it. But just imposing that change means changing all my systems and how I currently do things. So it's just it's just the wrench of doing it. And I think that's why people oppose change a lot of time because it's it's awkward, it's it's uncomfortable. It, it sure. needs planning, it needs work. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean that's that's another thing. I mean, it's you know, it overall if it benefits you. I mean, if you get hurt enough by these, I mean, obviously I'm I'm hoping that doesn't happen, but if you get hurt too many times by you know um, not tr having tracking you'll eventually you know take the pain of of the change and and switch to attract service i suppose yeah that's kind of where we're at to be yeah, honest. So, well, i mean yeah it's it, it's frustrating isn't it but it's it's just the way it works um you know you, you've got to match the rules i suppose and since ebay have been so keen on uploading tracking it it makes sense to 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 go on that um going back into the chat um, do you not think the way to pay at car boots will be like I pay PayPal says Peter Hill? Yeah, pretty much. Um, uh, someone, someone whose comment I've now lost said that uh, we should go back to bartering. 
So I'll, I'll give you a cheese sandwich <laughs> for that DS game sort of thing. Because <laughs> that, I mean, pre-money, that was it. I, you know, somebody would take a, a, a pig to market and trade it for a, trade. a load of flour or whatever it is. You know, I've got plenty of pigs, but I need some of them. Yeah. And you just barter and then money came in after that. I mean, the, the old Armageddon uh, sort of idea that when, when all banks collapse is that you would go back to bartering and, and the only things of any value would be gold, silver and commodities. Sure, sure. But, um, well, you've got I mean, six out there. Oh, yes. Electronic Firing Squad has uh, super chatted five dollars. Thank you very much. Speaking of pocket change, here's five dollars. American uh, keep being a king of Texy. We are few but mighty. <laughs> That's really kind of you. I really appreciate that. Um, I wouldn't say like I'm a king of tech or uh, there's plenty of people out there that have got loads more knowledge. I suppose we're just daft enough to be doing it all online, I suppose. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you very much. It's much appreciated. Um, lots of um, opinions on this, which is quite cool. Um, I've paid with PayPal at boot sale recently, says Neil Patterson. Yeah, I did that once. I had a, actually, um, there's a there's like a house clearance place up here, which um, opens its doors every Friday and Saturday. And they've got like their um, set up and normally it's just cash only and they don't, um, you know, they, they, they don't have any other option. But I think I saw like a really cool retro Kenwood uh, blender thing, you know, Kenwood mixer. And um, I was just like, look, I didn't, I, I didn't have any, you know, any cash on me. I didn't expect to to be going there. Um, and he, he took PayPal, and I was like, yeah, cool. Um, so it does work. Yeah, PayPal is is encroaching everywhere. It's hmm. they're a huge, huge company now, and they're making inroads all over the place, aren't they? And and technology is becoming cheaper. I mean. Uh, you know, there would have been a time where just the cost of taking card payments would have been extortionate. But now, um, I mean, Simon Mitchell has just touched on that in the chat, saying no cash would could, would be better. You can use iZettle. It takes card payments even in the middle of a field. And, you know, iZettle, but also PayPal, etc. they now offer you those card reading devices, don't they, which can take contactless payment um, or, 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 or PIN payment, so even if you're a one man band, it really isn't hard to, pay. I think sometimes I think PayPal have offered their card reading device for like 50 quid. And then I'm sure there's obviously a percentage cut that they take of, of everything. Um, but that's likely to drop when it, when it does become cashless, because obviously there'll be competition for people to take, um, you know, to, to handle your electronic payments. Yeah, I remember um, when, when we were setting up um, the clothing shop we had for a while, um, we actually went traditional and ended up having a, a phone line with a credit card machine. But we we almost went to PayPal and just we were just going to have an iPad, and it's all set up on an iPad now. And you can you can I've seen it in some stores. People just wander around with a pad now, and you do it all remotely. Yeah, and it's all that technology is in your phone, so it stands to reason that you you can literally stand in a car but as long as you've got signal, you can stand in a field and say how much you want, and you do the transaction there and then. I mean, I, I don't know how CEX works, but even they just work off regular laptops now, don't they? I think in, in went into CEX to buy something and I noticed they were just working on the, on a laptop as if they yeah. just had the website open and and were just dealing yeah, with it all through there. They all their card payments in regular machines, but but yeah, you can see, I mean, you, you imagine yeah. another five years ahead, let alone 10 years, and everything's shrunk again and become cheaper. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's heading that way, but at going back to the original question, I, I think cash will exist in some form for another good decade, if not two. But the, these forms of technology will will just encroach at quite a speed now. I think. Exactly. I I, I think it's just it, it's just a case of being prepared to adapt. I mean, it is like just the importance of it, really, isn't it? And that's something that if you do take on, if you do become open to adapting to things it just makes life a lot easier um especially when you're when you're just reselling because it's a case of not having all your eggs in one basket so um you know people are worried about you know if god forbid should boot sales ever stop i mean you know you, you I, just like people worry about what if your ebay accounts get shut 
shut down? What if your e uh, Amazon gets shut down? Some people may sit there and worry, like, what if suddenly the government decides to make boot sales illegal or something? What would I do? You know, if you've got that adaptability in your head, if, you, if you're able to stay calm and be like, okay, there are many ways of doing this, um, it won't um, be such a worry, I would say. So uh, Peter's got a, a good question that's worth touching on. He, he asks, uh, question, is it relatively easy to accept PayPal as a payment method for non eBay sales, i.e. somebody emailing you and asking to buy something? It is really easy. I mean, I've, I've had a few sales from from the side chat where people have said, I'd like that bag purse we had and other things. And I say, well, just message me your all you need is an email address that's registered to a PayPal account. And then in your PayPal account, you can generate an invoice and then you ping it to that email address and they get an, e uh, an invoice uh, detailing the item, any postage costs, and then they pay it or not, <laughs> as the case may be. But yeah, yeah, it's super easy and people use it for all sorts of stuff now. Silverhair Stacker does have quite a good question as well. Is no one worried that IT could crash? And then where is your money? Well, in a way, you're... you're we're already at that stage, aren't we? Um, just because you've got um, coins, um, you know, the value of, of those is still, you know, it, it's still kind of at risk to everything else that happens. I mean, if suddenly, um, if suddenly the banks, you know, the cash machines go down at a bank, you suddenly see queues of people queuing up to, to get their cash out. And it, it, you're still part of like that bigger computerized system, aren't you? So I, yeah, I well, if you actually take it a step further all money yeah. is just a concept it's not actually real doesn't it, it has no yeah. intrinsic value <laughs> yeah it's not backed up by gold piles anymore is it i mean it's you know it's um it's not, all, not, the whole system's yeah. Fragile. <laughs> yeah exactly we're all yeah, part Armageddon syndrome again in a minute yeah i think yeah. so i think so it's really interesting um thought actually it really is i mean already in pubs i couldn't imagine when i used to go to the pub as a teenager I couldn't imagine walking in a pub with a credit card and buying a round of drinks. But these yeah. days, I go in a Weatherspoons or, or most other pubs, and you just, you just, I don't even take my card out of my wallet now. I just hover my wallet above the little thing, and it's beep, and that's, that's my round paid. I couldn't <laughs> imagine that when I was a teenager, but that's commonplace now. Electronic Firing Squad says, I'm 99% cash buyer, though, despite being an online seller. And um, Lisa says, the PayPal cut is 5%. Uh, I've not actually looked into what the cut is, but um, an ad says, no way is it a cashless future. You can still make plenty of money. You just need to know where next to look. Well, I mean, I suppose what we're saying is even if it does become or or I'd argue even when it becomes a cashless future, there's there's no worry to what we do as as resellers. I think like the it comes down in a in a broader sense. It It kind of comes down to the question of, you know, will reselling ever stop? And I think the answer to that is no. I mean, like people have said many times, it's probably the oldest profession out there, bar the obvious um, that people always seem to mention. So <laughs> I, I would say that it's, um, I would say just in in, the, in that sense, it's probably something not to not to worry about. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, what's oh, there's Lisa again with a question. What is my favorite food? And we were going off topic here. <laughs> I think we could be. Go ahead, answer it. Oh, um, oh God. To be honest, I, I'm quite simple. I, I like a good fish and chips. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But I suppose burger or fried chicken i suppose but you know oh we all know yours z that's, that's common knowledge <laughs> yeah i talk about it a lot i'm actually trying to fool myself into drinking more water you can see my coca-cola branded water bottle you see I'm, I'm a coke fiend as well i absolutely am addicted to it and i know it it's probably dissolved most of my internal organs and my teeth and everything so i'm trying to cut down on coke because it's just bad so i I, in a weird way, I get comfort from drinking water out of a Coca-Cola branded water bottle. <laughs> How messed up is that? <laughs> That's pretty messed up. Yeah. You're messing with your own brain. I am. I'm playing with myself. Uh, God, that sounded wrong. Um, I'm mentally, um, I'm playing with myself. Joe's just asked. Um, so I was just distracted. Yeah. Uh, have you ever been to the USA? And how does US fish and chips compare to UK style? I have. 
um what i had over there just wasn't the same at all it was prepared differently and yeah so i'd have to say uk fish and chips is way better on my experience of american style of doing things uh one man right is saying yeah coca cola is terrible for you yeah definitely um um i've never been to the us so it's just really gutting i'm so desperate to go um and when i go i'm gonna go on a man versus food style tour definitely i want to have one of those giant deli pastrami sandwiches you know the ones that they dip in the, the sauce as well you know the sandwich and they dip it in like the the gravy or the jus and then oh. ah. Yeah, i'll tell you what americans do well is portion sizes as in if you like a big portion that sounds wrong if you like a big <laughs> portion and oh, breakfast God. what we loved yeah. when when we were in america there was the breakfast they just oh, they do big breakfasts oh gosh oh, whole waffles and maple syrup and pancakes and what and maple syrup <laughs> just like oh, i'm just, just i'm hungry now the thought of it, yeah, I'm definitely going to be doing that. I think that that's motivation right there for me um, to, to 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 get a family holiday sorted to the states. Um, Electronic firing squad has a question. He says uh, skimmers are a huge issue here in the states. Um, I think that taking card info. Uh, a friend of mine just had her card info stolen from using it at a gas station. You folks have the same issue across the pond. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it. It was really bad for a while, wasn't it? I think they, they've tackled a lot of it with technology, but yeah. Yeah, there was a point where you literally couldn't trust anyone. I remember once narrowing it down that I had like 200 pounds worth of, um, you know, remember phone voucher cards? People used to buy those. Um, I think, and, and I tracked down that I'd last used my card in a pizza hut. So whoever was working in the pizza hut when they took my card for payment must have must have skimmed it because i hadn't used it for anything else um and um you know bam 200 pounds worth of phone vouchers bought from the other end of the country um so it was an issue you're right but i think since chip and pin it's it's slightly less i guess um lonnie asked do you guys ever buy jewelry and find gold or silver have you had any experience with that nick i uh, it's not something i really look for I do have a little gold pendant cross that I've been meaning to list for ages. It's worth, Tom reckons it's worth between 50 and 70, I think he said. And it's still in my wallet. Oh, you still haven't listed that? No. I don't know what? why. It's just, uh, it better be in there anyway. Let's see. Just just like keeping it's hold of it. I think, I can't even remember where I got it, but I think it was in the bottom of a box. I don't know if that's showing. It's a really nice little Celtic cross. And I've got, I actually took it to like a little pawn shop just to just to find out exactly what it was. I wasn't going to sure. sell it to him. And sure. they wrote down exactly what it was for me somewhere. Uh, nine carat full English hallmarked Celtic cross. Oh, cool. But as far as jewellery goes, that's about it. <laughs> I don't look at it. I don't really know anything about it. But I do have that that I need to flog for about 50 or maybe 70 ads is actually quite passionate about the topic we were speaking about in terms of um cashless he says i hate cards they're destroying a banknote history of over 400 years in this country what happened to going out with a stack of pound notes sad face ah uh, yeah I, I, can, I can understand your position ads if you're um you know obviously i i know you're quite into your your um currencies and collecting so i can understand that um well, People yep. collect vintage credit cards. If you get some early access or Visa cards, you can sell them. They're collected. Well, like 80s ones. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, cool. So um, think about it. I mean, there's bound to be collectors of, of everything that, that is that throw away society. And credit cards, we are told we cut them up when they're, when they're done. So how many credit cards exist from the late 70s, early 80s when it all kicked off? So yeah, I mean, definitely. Um, Lonnie, in terms of jewellery, Beck has obviously gotten quite into um, picking up uh, like lots. So I, mean, I think we picked up a ten pounds worth of um, uh, what's it called uh, costume jewellery, and we've found some bits of silver in there. And recently, from that from a house clearance, we've still got so much jewellery, and we definitely, I think, have 
um, silver, and but I think we've also got gold as well. So it can happen. Um, I don't. I don't know if this. I should mention this really, but it's just been offered for my knock box. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna take that off from quite easy on my knockbox, but yeah, I'll say sell that as well. Yeah, what I've just they, what have they offered you then? I had it up for fifty quid, sold it for forty. Nice. Happy to take that, yeah. Were you in so, profit on the other part? Oh right? comfortably, yeah. I paid thirty one pounds for a coffee grinder and the knockbox together. It was up the road. Um sold the coffee grinder for a hundred and the knockbox has just gone for forty. So I, I um, love that when you're in profit on a deal and yeah. you've got other bits left, it's like it's all just money. You just yeah. you'd almost take any offer, not within reason. You know? No, no. I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, I think they've got a good deal. I'm I'm happy to to sell it for forty. So, um, you That's know, a quick turnover. Talking of which, yeah. we have one. Here it is here. I think I shared this with you actually. This um, oh, yeah. sold earlier for sixty quid with shipping on, which blew my mind. Uh, I've got a few others as well actually, but this was one that Andrea picked up. When we were on a yard trail thing, I think, I think it was in the, it was in a bundle. It owes us like four or five pounds. That is epic, yeah. actually. Yeah, for sixty quid for that. These are ever after high, so that they are all worth picking up. But I think it's the first series that are now deleted. Might be wrong. I don't know a lot about them, but I I noticed that one had sold for fifty recently, and I thought. Sorry. That is substantial, isn't it? I mean, sometimes you just have to ask for the money, don't you? I, I think sometimes when you list something, you just have to kind of just be uh, be ballsy and ask for 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 the money because then you avoid that horrible feeling of of, of did I undersell it? And I mean, I I think the only thing I've ha ever had similar to that was um I had those um designer barbie dolls they were from they were they were like an addition yeah. i think those were used and they went for like 50 60 quid each or something as well um yeah, incredible i was just like yeah crazy what um yeah, well, and, i'm of the mind that th there's no harm in like you say ask the question because if you don't ask you don't get in the first case but put it up high to start with because you know one cycle later if, if you look at it and it had hardly any views and no offers you know you're you're reaching way above your, your weight sort of thing, punching above your weight, but then you can drop it down. You've lost nothing apart Correct, from one yeah. listing fee. So it's always worth taking a punt. Who knows what happens? And this went GSP, you see. So perhaps it's going to France. So perhaps in France they're just, you know, even more uncommon or whatever. And mine might have been the only one available on international shipping. So um, I just noticed that Sam Tez Nutkins is in the chat. Hi, Sam. How are you? He says, having been, um, having been watched, um, oh, but there isn't a chance that I would let 99% of boot fair sellers anywhere near my bank details. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I suppose there is that worry. I mean, but if you're using like a contactless system, I don't think a boot fair seller can do anything with it. No. And that's that's the beauty of PayPal itself is no no details are exchanged. Happy chap says Nick and Z do America. I'd watch that. And um, <laughs> yeah, that I'd would be. It. Go back. I would love to go back there. So much fun. Um, Alia says, "Yep, the American Krispy Kreme donuts make ours look like chicken nuggets." Oh my god, just the thought of that is getting me excited. Actually, I love Krispy Kreme donuts. So they're just huge over there. They must be. And then um, Lisa Fenn says, Zahir and Nick, UK's answer to Beavis and Butthead. Funny you should say that, actually, because I was introducing my daughters to Beavis and Butthead. Um, they weren't that impressed. <laughs> I, I, I was like, uh, Beavis. <laughs> and then and they just you weren't, you know. Yeah. yeah. And then I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they just weren't yeah. getting it. I, I was like, how how is that not funny? And then I think it's slowly, it's it's working on them. They, they do need to like Beavis and Butthead. It's important. Um, and one man right says, agreed, Sam, lots of car boot sellers are a bit dodgy, really. Um, that's a bit. What's that in relation to? That, well, I think it's in relation to Sam's comment, um, about, um, being wary of handing your, um, oh, right, yeah. card over to, it's oh, a bit wow. of a generalization. You do get a varied amount of different parts of society. Everyone sells a boot sells. Yeah. Um, and one man right says, uh, I'm university ed educated like Nick and Tom, but I do find a lot of resellers a bit rough and ready. <laughs> That's a bit of sweeping generalization. <laughs> there, about. 
Yeah. There's, there's every part of society in reselling. Honestly, we are, you know, yeah, a smorgasbord of people. That's the word. That's a great word. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh gosh. Yeah. Uh, comments coming in about the um the knockbox sale. Uh, one man right says, "Well done, it's a great sale." And um. Southwest seller says, "Who pays forty pounds for an old knock box?" Yeah, you forgot the word poxy. You see, you're doing it wrong there, Gary. Yeah, <laughs> it's a poxy knock box. And um, Jason Entwistle is in there. Who pays sixty pounds for a poxy doll? There you go. So, there you go. Jason's got the go. money there. <laughs> My lovely customers. That's who. Exactly. It's, it, I, there's I value. Like love parting crazy people with more money than sense with their cash. It's it's like a it's a passion of mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's do you know what it's it's funny because sometimes it's easy to to be like that like you sell something and you're like oh my god this i would never pay this much for this myself and yeah you're right however sometimes you think back and you think there are things that you've paid crazy money for so i laugh at, uh, you know i can laugh at someone paying 60 pounds for a doll but i've paid 30 pounds for a mouse mat and to most people that's just like <laughs> what are you no, that, yeah. that, you were fleeced. Uh, Come on. Come on. No, I was. <laughs> I love my mouse mat, and I'd pay it again. Um, you know, just like my keyboard or my mouse, I pay for. It. I, I tell you the most silly thing I've got this, here. This, one sec. This one, yeah. I got two for two pound fifty. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's pretty good. I tell you, this will make you laugh. Then, Go on. Here, I can just bring it up to the camera. You see that there? Yeah. That is a um, what's called the Razer bungee, and it, it's designed just to keep your mouse cable from snagging on your desk. <laughs> so how, how extra is that? It was only fifteen. Well, only fifteen pounds. But it was fifteen pounds just to hold the mouse. I'll tell you cable. what, I'd have rigged something up with a loo roll and a bit of string or something. Most people do. Most people just <laughs> sellotape the, the cable to stop it from snagging. But you know, it's 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 interesting that you know it, we talk about this a lot, don't we? How when we sell some items, like, it's like wow, it's crazy. You know, like like your sayings become popular, hasn't it? Like who pays that for a poxy so and so? But we yeah, all have we all have these weird things, don't we? That we'd pay up for. I'm sure there are things that you'd pay up for if you thought hard to mind when we talk about overpaying is when i was mm. heavily into super nintendo and i would import games from japan before they came out <laughs> so i was paying up to 80 quid a game <laughs> just to play it early yeah. but they were, games were better though weren't they ja the um, japanese games faster. ran faster didn't they uh, street fighter 2 yeah. was faster yeah um, and you didn't have those horrible giant borders as well yeah. right because the pal conversions had really a huge so, so I, have, I have paid up for some things but yeah i'm i'm pretty tight <laughs> now you've, yeah it's, it's, it happens um michelle Izard says my friend who turned her garage into a hair salon had a knock at the door the other day it was the local rates department assessing her for business rates uh, apparently, if you convert your garage for use for business, you are liable for business rates. Anyone affected like this? Um, Ooh, that's well, interesting. Yeah, You're probably right, but uh, they haven't caught up with me yet. <laughs> I'm sat here broadcasting. On the <laughs> I think, I think you can. I mean, when you have when you do like your simplified accounts, you can use your home for business. So it's um. But it's it it's like they do a simplified calculation for your electricity and and gas and internet etc. Um, but yeah, that's something you'd have to look into. Um, Lisa Fenn's quoting um, Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> he he said Wiener. Yep. And Adam Kelsey's in there with TP for my bum hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, got an holly. That's it. Yeah. I love Beavis and Butthead. Oh, it's all coming back. Oh, gosh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Kyle says, I wish my daughter wanted a £60 doll. She is six and wants the new iPhone. <laughs> Epic. Oh, it's... Malinky, here you go. Yeah. I paid £80 for a turntable weight. It's a lump of metal. There you go. Yeah. I mean, audio files will pay immense amounts of money. Um, I mean, they, you know, there's no... That there's literally no barrier to 
to what they will spend to get any perceived improvement. Um, yeah. So what what was the other? What else is in the title that we were going to touch on? Was there two topics? Well, the, well, it's just the importance of adaptability that oh. kind of followed on with it, um, and and there is a bit and more. Um, and what I wanted to talk about with that was um, it, it's something I was talking to you earlier about. It's a bit out of the blue, but I just realized that when you, you know, kind of opposite to spending copious amounts of money on things that probably aren't worth much, the opposite to that is I, I noticed I use so many things on a daily basis um, that probably should be replaced but i just keep using them anyway oh, and yeah. it's just it's like why am i doing why am i putting myself through this and, and i was just wanted to it's, it's like let me hold you there for yeah. especially you who pays 15 pound for a thingy to hold <laughs> hold your mouse cable up yeah yeah <laughs> every day i struggle with with this 50 pence um sellotape dispenser now the dispenser itself is in good nick but the actual the, there's a spindle that's broken off on that side for the sellotape so when you're pulling the sellotape it, it moves the sellotape out and if, if i use this thing daily right and yet for some reason i've not replaced it and i don't know why um, I tell you what, I do love a, a one of those a weighty one. That looks good. Mine it's bit, heavy. It's full of sand. Yeah, exactly. mine's a bit lightweight. I don't know where it is now. I've got a smaller one, but I do. Next time I see one of those decent big ones at a boot sale, one that you yeah. can pull as hard as you like and it doesn't move. Well, it, it, this would be that one, but unfortunately, it's the problem snappy. is that <laughs> bit there. You see, that's got a spindle on that side. It's snapped off on that side, so it won't hold in place anymore. Um, but yeah, that would be, that would be, but I use it every day and I'm like, why haven't I gotten around to replacing it? Like, it's just so silly. It's just, well, well when you mentioned it earlier, I had to think, and the one thing that did spring to mind was my trusty granny trolley. Now, Andrea and I have one of these each, but mine has seen a lot more miles and if I can get it. So the sides are completely ripped. <laughs> this is showing. They're ripped right down to here now. <laughs> oh my god! Absolutely knackered. Oh my god! Oh, this yes. lasted longer than Tom. Tom Tom's on his I don't know fourth or fifth one. I think you'd have to ask him, but he managed to kill his. But yeah, but it's the fact that you're still using that in that condition. Yeah, I have uh, no shame. <laughs> I mean, that's the other thing. I've got these really cool scissors. I actually nicked these off my mum ages ago, but I've just noticed that they're missing the bolt on the other side. And still, I use these every day, and I don't replace them. And these are things I use for work. Yet it's it's weird that you kind of just just out of I don't know what it is. Just just trying to eke out every bit of value from them. Yeah, like you said, at the same time, I'll pay 15 quid for something that holds a mouse. I mean, what's going on? Um, it's Yeah, the, the other one that I've got to hand, actually, because we're thinking of doing another boot sale. I think I said on Sunday, we've sorted out a few crates of stuff that we're going to go and blow out at car boot sale. And I'm still using a pasting table I nicked out of my mum and dad's loft about 20 years ago, and the hinge is completely shot. <laughs> so I have to have... a a wooden pole up the middle to stop it collapsing. But these are like 10 pounds in B&Q to get a brand new one. But, but you go through the hassle of, of With an extra it leg for the last like 10 years or something. So yeah, I'm just the same really. Oh, I think a lot of people are. Let's go into the chat. Um, Charlotte Taylor says, hi guys, my dad's a big fan of both of you and it would really make him so happy if you could send him a message thanking him for watching your videos. He's called Pete Taylor and thanks in advance. Well, thank you, Pete Taylor, for watching our videos. We're so appreciative. It means a lot for, to, for anyone to watch, but, you know, shout out there. to Absolutely. To, yeah. Hi, Pete. Thanks for watching. Definitely. Um, Adam Kelsey says, do you need to replace your knockbox? I've got a, a much more um, compact knockbox that I use. Um, it's, it's It just sounds filthy. Why? why? It just sounds... <laughs> It does, doesn't it? I don't know. Um, um, Charlotte says it would really brighten his days. He's having a hard time right now. Well, we, yeah, we've 
shout shout it out thank you and thank you charlotte for watching as well by the way um happy chap says yeah z i need a new pc keyboard have sold two that could have replaced this one see it's that mentality it's weird isn't it so you've you've, you've actually you're putting up with a much more awkward and difficult experience for some an electronic firing squad says same i have a stapler that jams all the time waste about six staples to get one that does what it's supposed to do staplers are what a dollar yeah it's isn't that funny that people have got the same kind of issue um simon mitchell says z i fixed a similar cellular tape dispenser like that with a pen top wow that's going to extremes to, to well, fix. ryan says you can get those cellular tape dispensers from poundland see i'd have to disagree the ones in poundland you have to hold the dispenser and pull because there, there's no real weight there that <laughs> is one that you can do one-handed see that that <laughs> make, when you're holding down the flap and you've got it all right with <laughs> holding your down the flap are you nick <laughs> shush Stop it. Sorry. Right? <laughs> you, you one hand holds down the flap with your bit of, like when you're doing Christmas wrapping, right? You need a stuff right. tape dispenser that doesn't lift up with the tape. The ones in Poundland are no good. They're no good. Um another YouTube commentator in caps shouts, cashless society coming soon. It's the mark of the beast. <laughs> um there we go. It's it's been said. Um it's, Silver hair stack says granny trolley ripped. Yeah. Um, I, I need to do something about that, but yeah. I don't know what. Simon Mitchell says you could fix it with some gaffer tape. <laughs> Good. Yeah. And Southwest Ellis says that's going to fail the next MOT. <laughs> um, Kevin Rosen says you should get Tom on for a chat. We definitely should. Yeah, it's been ages. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, Tom hasn't been doing a great deal on YouTube. I know he's got a lot of issues of his own that he's working through at the moment. So, but yeah, once, yeah, at some point, yeah, we'll definitely come back on, hopefully. Uh, I still talk to him regularly. Um, yeah. He's cool. We... It's just dealing with a lot of stuff right now. Um, Richard Payne says, you've not replaced it, Z, because there is KFC to buy instead. Got to get your priorities right. Well said, Richard. I can't argue with that. Um, that picture you share. If, if, a lot of these guys are in the the tat chat group that we started but those that aren't there's a picture that you shared in there of poor beck sitting in a kfc with a tiny little portion <laughs> of chips because that's all she could buy yeah beck's vegetarian so, well pescatarian really but um yeah she had to sit there whilst me and the girls were eating chicken um <laughs> feel pretty bad for her actually um just had a super chat come through from peter ray for a new table for the car boot great chat and topic um appreciate that peter ray really do um thank you glad that you're enjoying the um the topic um <laughs> epic um i love a saggy table at a boot fair says happy chap 84 never seen one collapse yet though oh i've seen one go i've seen one that was <laughs> just what well, it was a guy who was uh a, a, i think he was a reseller selling cds and he had little box full boxes full of cds you know the type i mean and yeah. it stacked them all across his table two rows and it just went a whole lot just went the table was finished ripped the screws out from where the hinge is and it was gone oh gosh but you, you you do see that you see people that clearly do boot fairs regularly and again they're afflicted with the same issue that sometimes i don't know what it is but you put up with these unnecessary things um you could you know you could really um that could make your life easier i mean um in a lot of other ways i try to make life a lot easier for myself so for example when it comes to to packaging i'll make sure that i um that i buy um the right kind of cardboard boxes i mean I'm just behind me i don't know if you can see i've just had a massive um box a bunch of um cardboard boxes um delivered because having the right equipment is so important and it it, it makes life so much easier but we all do it w with well, certain think, things that we just i think it comes with the territory a little bit if you're a reseller you're of that mind of of making the most out of stuff and mm. also if you're a thrifter and you come from that background i don't know it's the kind of make do and mend mentality and yeah. I, I do love getting my money's worth out of something. I think that's what it comes down to. I, I use it till it's like with my Converse. I need to buy new Converse. I have a collection of about, I don't know, 
seven or eight pairs and they're all at the point where they're just about knackered but i'm just eking them eking them out i'm currently wearing oh, i haven't even got high tops on i've got little ones and i've got christmas socks on as well <laughs> oh you frozen are here is the hair gone hello z oh let me know in the chat have, have i has the hair frozen I'm not seeing anything moving. <laughs> I don't know if it's just me still broadcasting and Zaheer's not there. Let me know in the chat what you guys can see because I can't hit, see or hear Zaheer right now. Oh, Z's gone. Z's froze. Oh, okay. Well, we'll have to hope that he can get back in the chat. Let me see if I can message him. Bear with. Let me just bring up Messenger. I don't know what went on there. Should be as simple as coming, joining the chat again. Are oh, there you? Can you get back in? Oh, we'll have to see. Um, Am, am I still broadcasting then? Can you guys still, still still see me? Beck's revenge. Z went to get a KFC and a coffee <laughs> while he gives his knockbox a bash. Oh, my God. Well, it's just us then. But Z is the host, right? Yeah, Z is the host. But can he not still use the link? I don't know. I think you can still get back in. Tell you what, I'll phone him now. I would if I could find my phone. Epic fail, I don't have my phone. I'm doing pictures, where's my phone? Hmm, hold on. All right, let's find out what's going on. Do, 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 do. Right, let's see if he's trying to get back in or if he can't actually get back in because he's the host. Hello? Hello. Can, can, yeah, can you not get back in from the link? I think I'm, I'm still... You've had a power cut. Let me put you on speaker so everyone can hear. Yeah, is that all right? That's right, yeah. So, Everyone's like... Um, off alarms are going off and whatnot. It's like next door neighbor's burglar alarms buzzing, and I've just I, I should be able to get back in now, though. Okay. So, All right. Well, uh, well, yeah. People, start. people can still yeah. see and hear me, and they can hear you on the phone now. Brilliant. They, they think you've run off to KFC. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. No, I've not run off to KFC. I've literally had. I've never had that happen before. I just had a mad power cut. So my internet router is just reset. So, All right. No worries. Um, I'll, I'll yeah. hold the fort for five minutes till you get back in. No worries. Okay. All right, mate. Okay, so I assume you heard that. Um, yeah, so here's just got to reset everything. They've had a power cut. So there you go. He hasn't run off to KFC. Uh, yep. Yep, you're on, Nick. What? Can you hear oh, me now? Oh, you're back already. That was quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, was, it was it was all a bit messed up. Yeah, so sorry about that, guys. Just had a power cut. Um, a bit weird. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I thought I'd done something. I thought I'd killed the internet by showing my Christmas socks in August. Oh no! I just lifted up my leg to show my, my Converse for some reason. I showed my Christmas socks. Oh, I, I can't thought, believe that. I thought I destroyed the internet. Yeah, no, no. It's just just a power cut random. It's just restarted. Um, it's just crazy i've not been eating kfc i'm not wiping my mouth or anything like that um do apologize for that guys um and yeah it's grim up north says peter ray um kfc emergency no there's no kfc emergency uh, um, well i mean it is actually seven o'clock now um so we've been going for an hour yep. your hair needs redoing 
Um, no, uh, it's actually pretty cool, guys. Um, I'm actually going to be going off after this to meet up with David McGregor. He's up, up this way. Um, he was doing a bit of a, a buy. Um, he went all the way to Carlisle to pick up some some uh, like a buy that he had. Um, Dave Rowland says one pound for the meter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, 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 I don't know what what caused it, guy. Um, it was guys, the but. Um, um, the, the, yeah, the I don't peddling in in the big general. Yeah, yeah, probably something along those lines. And Taxi White says, "Why have I got bed hair now?" It's because I just took the headset on and put it back on. <laughs> so, so um, is, so is David coming around to yours? Is that the plan, or are you going out? No, no, I'm, I'm going to go out. Um, we're going to meet up with him just at lo um, actually at the same pub that we went to. Oh yeah, um, sorry, you did say so, earlier. Yeah, yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so that'll be pretty cool. Um, so guys. Um, the orange and black thing, that's just a box of CDs there, the Hillsman, that's all. Um, yeah, I just yeah. noticed um, Karen said um, that she was loving the new Tatchat group. Uh, we'll give that one more mention. If you've just joined us and you've missed the Sunday ch show, there is a new group where uh, if you're a fan of our chats and, you know, fun, irreverent chat, <laughs> that can carry on in the, the Facebook group that we set up. I mean, it is, it's reselling at its core, but it's also just about people, a place where people can socialize. That's the idea behind it. Uh, should be a link below. So go over there and we'll let you in and we'll say hi when you get there. Yeah, definitely. Um, other than that, really appreciate it. we've got over 130 people watching. If you enjoyed the chat, please smash the like button. It shows that um, you know, well, it just it's just good for my ego, actually. Uh, so thank you. If you could do that, that'd be appreciated. Um, as always, uh, Nick, thank you for joining me. Actually, it's a pleasure. Can I give a quick plug to uh, Thursday? Um, we have a guest on. We we do the guest chats on a, on a different day now. Uh, it just makes sense with the tat chats changing channels. So on Thursday we have a guest. Um, will you be around on Thursday to join me for that? Should be, yeah, should be. Fantastic. Should so be. Thursday at six we have a guest on. Still a secret. Uh, I won't announce that till mm -hmm. uh, we we have the person in question on, and then we'll be back on Sunday, and you'll be back on Friday. I'm guessing. Yep, we will be uh, as usual. So. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. As always, the chat was brilliant, vibrant, buzzing. Lots of people uh, getting involved uh, with the topic, and um, you know, Nick, as always, pleasure. So, I'm just wondering quickly oh. what Garage is saying. Come on, tell us. I don't know. What... Oh, the, who the guest is? Oh no, definitely not. Now you've asked. Oh no, no, we're not, we're not telling you who the guest is, guys. No, <laughs> that's that is a secret, top secret uh... until. Thursday, so six o'clock on Thursday uh, on my channel. Um, but Dave Rowland, I'll tell you, now, eight, it's, it? it's not my mum. <laughs> no. Is it KFC? Oh, you never know. All right, guys. Yeah, so hopefully, see you Thursday. Thanks for here. See you guys later. Thank you.